First of all, he was born into God's chosen people, as evidenced by his circumcision on the eighth day. He was born a Jew, and that made him God's favorite. But he was also born in the Roman city of Tarsus, and that made him a Roman citizen. Now, this comes in real handy when the Romans control your country. Because Paul had special privileges as a Roman citizen that his fellow Jews didn't have. Like I said, he's got it made. He also had his own successful business. He was a, an entrepreneur, a tent maker. And so he didn't have to depend on, on his boss. He didn't get yelled at. He didn't worry about getting fired or laid off. And that right there might think that might make you think that you're in control of your life if you're in control of your work. But Paul had even more to fall back on. In Acts 22, it says he was trained under the famous teacher, Gamaliel. So he's got the right education. He went to the Harvards or the Yales or the MITs. He's, he's got the right education. And he was a part of the right party. The Pharisees were the cream of the crop among the Jewish parties. And Paul was a Pharisee among Pharisees. He was faithful to God and in all the laws. It was legendary how, how well Paul kept the laws and his zeal to please God went so far that he was willing to go to Damascus to drag back those ignorant Christians for trial. Paul had everything in the world to give him confidence the right background, the right nationality, the right job, the right education, the right party, the right behavior, the right family, the right devotion to God. He had it all. His life was in order. His ducks were in a row. And he was confident that his life was heading in the right direction. Now, my life and yours may not be nearly as together as Paul's was. But I bet there are things in your life that help you to feel confident. Things that you put your trust in. Things that you rely on. What do you rely on to get you through life? To point you in the right direction? Do you rely on having the right friends? Being a part of the right group? Do you put your confidence in the family that you're from and the fact that you have family to back you up? Do you put your confidence in your education, your training, your job skills? Do you rely on the fact that you're an American or a good person or a churchgoer? Is it your good looks that you trust or your smarts or your zealousness for doing what's right? Do you depend on, on rituals and routines and as long as things stay in that same pattern, you feel good about life and you're confident that it'll, it'll go well? Paul had this and more. But then one day, God surprised him. Verse 3. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. A flash of light, the voice of the Lord, and suddenly the one who thought he had his life figured out is lying there blind. And Jesus is asking him, why do you persecute me, Saul? This is not how life was supposed to be. Saul knew Jesus was dead long ago. He knew that Christianity was a joke, a crime. But Jesus surprises him slaps him upside the head, so to speak, and says, get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what to do. 
And this one who is going to lead the Christians away in chains now has to hold out his hand like a little child so someone can lead him. And I want you to notice that in this story, this isn't the tale of someone who is diligently seeking the Lord and finally he gets a chance to meet Jesus. Paul thought he already knew God pretty well. He wasn't on a religious pilgrimage. Jesus just surprised him and knocked him on his keister. When has Jesus surprised you? When has God done something in your life that you never expected? Maybe you've had something like Paul's Damascus Road experience. And if you have, then you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, well, God isn't finished surprising people. God is not through yet. Verse 10. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. 